topic of my talk and uh, exactly 40 years ago I looked like this <laughs> that was uh, that was when uh, in, in the summer of 1976 I became a dinky die Aussie on that day the, uh, uh, local council president came to my house and he made me into the uh, member of this society and my friend I'm not the tall one <laughs> my friend is a well-known painter from the Blue Mountains and when I moved to the Blue Mountains that was within a, exactly 40 years ago um, I noticed that the businessmen going down to Paramata or to Penrith to work to their little shops all looked like this. Uh, they had a tie and often short sleeve shirt and it was a short and also the, the uh, socks, long socks. I don't think that that is happening anymore but I was so impressed <laughs> at the time. Uh, the reason why I'm showing it is because I was hoping that uh, um, Rich Ryan will be here because about a month ago uh, Herb showed a picture of Rich at the same time at one of the meetings and uh, I thought I'll show my picture as well. Uh, he, is, he is a bit more handsome than I am uh, uh, and didn't have a beard but uh, otherwise uh, you know, I think I have better legs than him. <laughs> Okay, so can I go on? I'll cheer you up a little bit. So some things that I have learned over my life, 40 years, maybe more than 40 years, uh, that I thought I should bring here and uh, kind of pontificate, uh, not quite, but uh, uh, mention some of the things that uh, I've learned. One of them is from Ray Cattell. I'll bring him up again later on. I, as I'm growing older, I think more about him eh, in my life. His idea was that the purpose of multivariate research is to be able to get every single measure we can get of a human being and then use multivariate approach to reduce it. And once we can do that and uh, come up with the major uh, dimensions, and once we can do that, we can understand human beings. This has not happened, but that was the hope in 1960s, 1950s. And uh, to some extent, that was motivating the way I am. Uh, I have enjoyed the research, uh, meaning that uh, I want to bring uh, as many different constructs in psychology to bear on what I'm looking at, uh, that uh, I'm interested in at the moment. Uh, not just focus on one thing but uh, as many as I can. Uh, I just learned about a month ago that uh, Herb calls this uh, jingle jangle fallacy. Uh, uh, back when Cattell was, uh, and uh, we used to call it jangle jingle bell fallacy, but uh, uh, basically what it means, uh, what we realized at the time, uh, 1950s, 1960s, is that there are so many uh, measures in uh, psychology that the people are using and quite often uh, they are not compared to each other and so the uh, guy that has a power at the time uh, uh, talks about his own uh, constructs and then they disappear quite often when the guy dies. Uh, so uh, whenever we, uh, when, uh, I was taught that whenever I develop something new I should compare it with the previous and not make a big deal unless I can prove that uh, it is different from what we know. The other thing that I have learned was uh, with respect to cognitive psychology. There was a cognitive revolution in intelligence research that I was working with um, in 1980s, 1970s, where cognitive psychologists were telling us that uh, a lot can be gained 
by using the principles of quantum psychology. What turned out, these are all experimentalists. They use small number of participants, t-test, usually f-test, uh, and they were uh, using small effects. They were focusing on small effects, and these did not replicate as well as some of our work in the area of individual differences. So, the thing that I have learned, pay attention with big effects, what hits you in between your head, and forget about small effects. I have seen some presentations here that did talk about small effects, but I kept my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, since you don't know me, I totally introduced myself. Eh? That is some of the background that I had. I retired from the University of Sydney in, I think, uh, in 2003, working there for about 30 years. Uh, and then uh, I spent some time uh, going on sabbaticals, as it is called, called in the States, study years. Uh, a Yale visit with Bob uh, Sternberger, Sorbonne, Jacques Lautre, Cambridge with Nick McIntosh. These are all people in uh, intelligence research. Uh, ETS, I worked there for about four or five years. Uh, NIE uh, in, in Singapore, UWS, and you know some of that history better than I do by now. Uh, back uh, in about 20 years ago, uh, Doug Lee, and I apologize, some of this is a petition from some of the things that I have said uh, to some of the meetings that you, uh, some of you might have attended. But uh, Doug Vickers uh, was an uh, uh, experimental psychologist from uh, Adelaide who made this statement uh, at one of the conferences uh, that uh, psychologists are water, like water buffaloes. They uh, move around Northern Territory, they go to uh, Billabong and muddy the waters and then uh, get mm -hmm. out of it and then move to another billabong, muddy the waters and uh, so on and so on. Uh, he said that is what psychologists are and I certainly fit into that picture. Uh, I spent my, my life working in different fields in psychology. One was the psychometrics of the fluid and crystallized intelligence theory. I developed the tests of them, uh, auditory abilities and then followed up in, over the years afterwards with the uh, measures of tactics measures of kinesthetic, all this is um, in the past. But I did some work in that area. Cognitive basis of GFGC theory, my interest was in distinguishing between difficulty and complexity, because uh, some people were confusing these things, and they are clearly different and should be treated in different ways. Uh, another area that I have worked in uh, is confidence, metacognition, and the issues, uh, that, that comes from the work on, in econometrics for most part, the behavior decision making. Uh, um, and uh, um, I was interested in uh, applying it to uh, uh, educational research. And then uh, in mid-2000, I started working in the field that I will talk about today. And then, uh, as some of you know, uh, I have been working in the militant uh, extremist. Uh, so uh, I look like a buffalo. Overall, <laughs> these are all different, uh, different uh, areas. Uh, some of the predecessors of what I'm going to talk about uh, today, uh, I just mentioned here. Back in 1978, when I was in Yugoslavia, one of the things that we were interested in is finding out whether communism, that was by that time uh, 30 years of age uh, in the country, uh, made any impact on a, a, a social uh, life and the way people, uh, people thought. Uh, so we used the uh, um, F scale, which is Adorno's uh, uh, scale of uh, authoritarianism, and gave it to some, Australian, uh, some Yugoslavian kids. And it turned out uh, that communism did not change the way people were thinking very much. They were authoritarian. Uh, Serbs were, uh, at Yugoslavs in general, were uh, as authoritarian uh, at the time uh, as they were uh, after the Second World War. Another area uh, that was of interest to me was close to this country. I had a, a Yugoslavian friend who visited the state for six months here uh, back in the begin at the beginning of the 2000s. That was at the time when uh, I should say that, maybe I shouldn't, but I will. Uh, uh, <laughs> at the time when uh, basically positive psychology existed, but it was not po as popular in uh, Australia as it has turned out to be you know, over the past few years. So we were looking at uh, what uh, we called uh, a moral social attitudes, which in fact 
are largely uh, the uh, social attitudes having to do with antisocial eh, behavior. Eh? So, but we call them immoral because we didn't want to uh, uh, make a judgment eh, about them. I'll mention a, a, a thing here because uh, being Australians, you might be interested in at least one of the findings. Yeah? Uh, and then uh, I uh, uh, ran a study at ETS. Uh, between 2008 and 2014, uh, cross-cultural uh, work that was a pilot study for what I'm going to talk about today. I want to talk about this stuff today because uh, I feel that I'm getting close to finishing, uh, looking at the data, and I want to move on to something else and I want to share it uh, with you. I don't think that many people here would be totally interested, in, but it might be of some interest. Uh, so. Here is, uh, in 2005, Stanko and Knezevich published this paper on amoral social attitudes. We had uh, a set of measures that came out from uh, the work in criminology in Yugoslavia. He brought those measures, we translated them, and we also employed uh, Schwartz's, uh, Schwartz's uh, and Bilke, Bilsky's uh, S SBS, Schwartz's Value Survey, which is one of the uh, best known in cross-cultural psychology um, surveys uh, in existence today. A lot of work is being done on it. Uh, and uh, we gave it to uh, Aussies and to Serbs, uh, basically, at that time. And uh, Aussies, I have to say that, were not just from the University of Sydney, but also from Toowoomba. And you know these uh, Queenslanders are a little bit uh, like Texas Cowboys. Uh, uh, so what turned out to be the case, <laughs> okay? <laughs> uh, sorry about this. Any Queenslanders in the house? Thanks, I'm blushing now, sorry. <laughs> Okay, and he agreed with the statement. <laughs> okay, um, four factors came out from that side. There were about 20 scales that we used. And it turned out that the finding that we had was, uh, the major finding was uh, that Serbs score significantly higher, higher than Australians on tough immorality. Tough immorality, immorality is machoism. We are, you know, Macho type people, uh, which is not all that bad, but Australians were worse on uh, uh, malicious uh, immorality, which I now call nastiness. They are prepared to uh, you know, punish you more if you do, do something bad that serves. No American friend of mine, I was there in America, could believe it that serves, everybody knows how nasty they are, could be uh, worse than, than uh, Aussies, but that is what we found. Um, another study uh, was uh, the pilot study for what I'm going to talk about today uh, is basically based on some uh, 2,300 or so uh, participants who took a TOEFL test at the ETS. TOEFL test is a test of English as a foreign language and the people who are enrolling at the universities in America would have to pass it then if they come from uh, some other country and English is not their native language. So we gave them, we asked, we gave them 50, uh, 20 bucks and said, uh, please work on this, uh, uh, work on this uh, uh, scale, uh, uh, provide us with the answers uh, and we will uh, uh, give you 20 bucks for doing it after they have uh, written, uh, passed their uh, their TOEFL test. So the English was uh, reasonably good, no real problem with that uh, translation. And then what we found out uh, was quite interesting at the time, it, it did not replicate. Uh, uh, we had measures of personality, well, we cover them uh, soon, all these measures that I mentioned, I'll, I'll uh, list later on. Uh, personality, social attitudes, uh, values, what is in, scale was uh, there, in, uh, there as well and also measures of uh, what we call social norms. I'll describe them uh, all. And um, it, it was interesting because uh, the factors that came out from the individual analysis uh, of the data were showing that uh, personality scales define a single factor. And that was one of the reasons we went on with a big uh, uh, one uh, general factor of personality. And people are talking about it uh, nowadays. Uh, the other one was the values defined a separate factor and social norms defined a uh, separate factor. In, irrespective of the fact that they are all conceptually different and people were talking about uh, them as completely different. 
But there was one factor that came out uh, that we called conservatism that had the loadings from these particular scales. Uh, conservatism was measured by one of the scales, conscientiousness in personality, religiosity, and religiosity often uh, is one of the major uh, aspects of uh, conservatism in our work today. Spirituality, harshness to outsider, tradition, conformity, and so on. I don't want to talk about, there are about four or five papers that we have published on, 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 the, on the basis of this. But also we calculated the mean uh, for the participants for a particular country. And uh, we, we then subjected, treated countries as individuals. And that is what I will be talking a bit uh, here, a bit more than uh, later on. Uh, so you use countries as individuals. And you can carry out, you have the measures, the means for each one of these measures, and you can then carry out factor analysis. What turned out to be the case for this particular study, out of these, I think there were 33 uh, countries altogether, and they listed that in there, two factors at the country level emerged. One factor is uh, uh, horizontal, which stands for conservatism, liberalism, and I will be talking about it more here. The other one is harshness, softness uh, factor. Uh, the most important factor that we have focused on uh, subsequent to this study is the one I have here, the harshness, uh, the, harshness, the uh, uh, conservatism liberalism. What you have here is conservative countries like Philippines, Ethiopia, Morocco, Sri Lanka, and so on. And you come to Germany, France, Austria, Poland, Japan is up there, and so on. Uh, the second factor, harshness, softness, is not as strong in our work, but it is there and distinguishes uh, between, in this particular study, between what we call Confucian countries on one, uh, one end, China, Taiwan, South Korea, India is there as well, uh, from the Latin American countries. The, 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 the ones up there are harshness, and I have another paper talking about unforgiving Confucian culture that got me into trouble with some Confucians. Uh, not really, but uh, uh, it is an interesting thing to, to observe. Okay, so let me go on. Uh, perhaps I should uh, tell you, as you do the work in quantitative areas of psychology, that I found it hard to present the questionnaire items and then talk about the factors if I don't uh, also, in the text itself, uh, bring in a definition. And basically what I've done in this case, and it was success, uh, to my surprise, uh, because always, as I look at the data, as I look at the numbers and the tables, and they are more important than what the person tells, but it turns out that when I translated the statements into words like these, people understood what I was talking about. Eh? So you have uh, conservative seniors subscribe to conventional religious beliefs, mystical, including paranormal experiences, who attaches particular importance to respect for tradition, humility. And each of the statements in our questionnaire addressed some of these issues, but it, it was easier to get it across to the readership in this way. Likely to be less open to intellectual challenges and will be seen as a responsible good citizen uh, at work and the uh, society while expressing rather harsh views about uh, those outsiders. Does that sound like a conservative kind of a person? Yeah. Uh, I was surprised. So uh, in our work that I uh, bought the pilot and what I'm going to talk about uh, now, uh, two things uh, are negative, and I am in a big trouble with the cross-cultural psychologists. Uh, there is a whole, there is a whole big body of research on cross-cultural differences in personality, and there is even bigger body of research on uh, values, Schwartz's uh, values, Schwartz's extremely powerful in the field and I quite like his work but unfortunately when we put together with all these other measures remember the very first statement that I had there put it together and see what is important and what shows significant differences then it turned out that uh, cross-cultural differences on measures of personality and values are less than 10% of the total variability okay 
uh, social norms, conservatism, religiosity, they all are, uh, um, take a much stronger, uh, much bigger percentage of total values. Uh, and then uh, I'm saying we should focus on what matters, what shows significant difference. And uh, um, kind of, if you want to work on smaller, I don't want to be uh, involved with it. Uh, cross cultural differences in what big differences uh, appear. You don't have to agree. Okay, so um, the study uh, uh, I uh, started in 2008, right before going to uh, uh, Singapore, I thought uh, I had enough of uh, America and I'll go to Singapore. My family is here in Australia, Singapore is closer to Australia and so on. Um, and uh, it was uh, funded by the American Air Force, uh, the Scientific Research Office of American uh, Air Force, that funded the other work of mine as well. And um, I was uh, given about one and a half million dollars to go on with this study, but I decided to leave. And my colleague, Gerard Saussure from the University of Oregon uh, agreed to take over and join me. Uh, but instead of having uh, TOEFL participants in the study, he was in fact approaching people from different countries to uh, collect the data for him. Uh, and he managed to get the data from some 33 countries. The questionnaire itself uh, had about 281 um, items, probably more than that, uh, from what I remember, but that's what he said in one of his papers. And about 50 scales, measures, uh, measures of personality of different things that I will uh, mention to you shortly. And this is the number of people that he managed uh, to uh, get. Uh, the way he selected the countries, and that was, um, uh, I think, very good, he looked at what is known as the regions of the world, and they are listed there, East Asia, Anglo, Southeast Asia, and so on. And this was produced by other cross-cultural psychologists. Uh, and uh, he tried to pick up at least three countries from each one of these regions. So you have Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand there, and you have uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, and so on. As you can see, um, uh, and you will see, uh, the number of participants from different countries varies from about 400 in Argentina to about 30 or so in, in uh, some of the other countries. And that is something that we could not uh, control, but I think the data is such that uh, we should uh, take it uh, more seriously than dismiss it on the basis of the number of uh, participants, particularly because we were looking uh, at the countries as units and uh, analysis as well. Okay, so four domains, personality and uh, for the personality scales they had on top of the screen, eh? describe how you, uh, the way you think, feel, and act. Social attitude, state of mind, feelings towards uh, a specific object or social interaction. To what extent do you agree that you should uh, uh, hit your sister if she is nasty to you? Uh, social axioms, beliefs about the world, world views, beliefs about people, social institutions, and so on. This is a relatively new development by Bond, at, uh, Michael Bond at uh, uh, Hong Kong University. And social norms uh, that are based on uh, the GLOBE study that I will mention uh, um, again. Uh, so. Okay, so these are the uh, personality scales. Uh, we have uh, six instead of five. There are some major studies showing that honesty uh, should be added uh, as a particular aspect of the big, uh, in addition to big five. Gerard Saussure was involved in, uh, in some of that work and there are other people who are talking seriously about big six instead of big, uh, big uh, five these days. And you all probably know that. Social axioms are relatively new. And each one of these that I mentioned here has uh, sets of scales, set items, uh, statements, and so on. And they are all uh, reproduced in uh, the publications that I have uh, reported on uh, all these uh, things. So social complexity is a uh, belief that people's behavior may vary across situations and that problems have multiple solutions. So uh, generally believing that uh, it is not very simple to live in the world, uh, in, the, in the society. Uh, religiosity, you can read uh, 
all this. No, but that has come out, and I have, I have published last year a study based on this data that replicates basically the social axioms as they were proposed by Bond at the individual level, not at the country level. So this is what we have found um, on the basis of uh, uh, some, uh, his work, and it is there. Uh, the same thing did not happen with the social norms. Uh, this uh, so-called GLOBE study, uh, published in 2004, and it is the management, uh, people in the management uh, area of business uh, who are interested in globalization. And uh, um, they have developed it, and there is a bit of argument between some of the other cross-cultural psychologists and the management-oriented uh, people. Uh, but uh, I liked using this because uh, it was providing measures at both individual and the country level, whereas, whereas most of the other, Hofstede, if you know that name, is based only on the country means level that I have described earlier. So, um, and I'm a, an individual differences psychologist, and I, I like working with individuals rather than that. And these are the three out of nine that we managed to replicate from, uh, with the data that we have here. So uncertainty, avoidance, power distance, humane orientation, and gender, non-egalitarianism. They talk about egalitarianism, but in fact the questions are uh, more oriented towards uh, non-egalitarianism. The boys uh, are better in sports or some uh, things. So uh, this is social attitudes. Now, uh, this is something that goes back to my work with the Yugoslavs and uh, with, with the stuff that I mentioned uh, earlier. We had about 20 uh, scales measuring what we call social attitudes. Some of it coming from my work on, uh, uh, on uh, uh, the various other things uh, that I have been international. Uh, so you have pro-violence, moral, social attitudes uh, uh, that uh, we used in the previous study, betaism, which is the ism scale, of, uh, one of the ism scales from Saussure's work uh, of social attitudes, Machiavellianism, pro proneness to aggression, grudge is one of my uh, uh, militant extremist measurement. Uh, 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 scale, uh, material, materialism, they all hung together to define a single factor. And I call that factor uh, nastiness. Okay? And the uh, feature of that factor is what I have there. Not very positive, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, social attitudes, uh, morality, here we had the hate uh, studies on moral foundations, some 30 items that comes from the literature, moral social attitudes. We had reverse items from the amoral social attitudes and they define a separate factor. So we included them here. Gammaism from Saussure's work, communal rationalism, in the measures of individualism and collectivism as well uh, were part of it. Uh, values, transcendence, and so on. Social attitudes, they are good things um, that uh, uh, you know, keep the society together. And uh, uh, religiosity is another one. Uh, I did not think that religiosity will come out as, as strong, but it did. Uh, and uh, it is one of the uh, measures of religiosity are the largest cross-cultural differences that we have. Okay, and here are these correlations between the three uh, social attitudes factors that I had uh, described to you a minute ago. And what is very interesting, and some of the people, I was hoping Alex or Thierry will be here, but uh, Phil might uh, be able to uh, uh, tell me if he knows uh, some of this literature. When you are working on the individual level, so 8,800 people, and you correlate the factor scores between uh, these people, what turns out to be the case is religi religiosity correlates with both morality and uh, nastiness, but nastiness and morality do not correlate. You can be, you can be nasty and either moral or amoral. You can be uh, moral or either nasty or not nasty. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Uh, however, when you have the countries as units of analysis, then the correlation is what I have there. They are, it is still lower, but uh, there, it looks as if there is a general factor 
uh, that I call conservatism coming in and we'll come to it uh, shortly. Okay? Um, so, all three factors have negative correlations with cognitive ability. Nastiness has a little bit lower than the rest because uh, of, of the presence of, of Confucians who are uh, extremely good but also a bit nastier than uh, the rest. Uh, so, um, a Pew Research Institution in the United States asked that question, to be moral do, we, do you have to, be believe, to believe in God? And it was an international study as I was working on this stuff and I ran into it uh, and it says yes, most, in most countries they say uh, to be moral you have to believe in God. The exception uh, being in Europe, uh, France, Spain, Czech Republic and Britain, 80% of the people think that uh, you can be moral without being uh, religious. And uh, for the whole thing, U.S. was rich, but it was religious. And uh, I think uh, some of the Americans here would agree with this, that they were more religious than the rest. And China, uh, among, sorry for missing a, uh, among the developing or poor country, uh, was not religious, uh, or uh, did not think that it is important to be religious uh, um, and uh, um, be, be moral. So th these two exceptions, I thought it was interesting. Uh, the big picture, what are the dimensions of cross-cultural difference? So now if you have factor scores and uh, scales from these different uh, areas, personality scales, uh, social attitudes factor scores, social axioms factor scores, uh, five norm factor scores, four that I identified, and there was another one that uh, we had a revival scale in there, but I want to uh, mention uh, this in particular. And the, uh, the, the big picture is this. Uh, social awareness is a factor that comes out with morality being a part of it. Uh, so you have social complexity from the social uh, norms, reward for application, power distance, originality and extroversion coming in defining that factor, but morality was there among the stronger predictors. So um, now I call it social awareness morality factor rather than a single morality as I had eh, in the past. The second one is nastiness and social dominance, eh, uh, where you have the nastiness factor from social um, attitudes, social cynicism, faith control, gender, and so on, and religiosity comes as a separate uh, factor. There are two scales of religiosity uh, in, in the whole thing, atheism and, and also Duke, uh, religiosity index, and it turned out, oh, no, it, it was a part of, of one of the, the other uh, measures. Uh, so it turned out that social attitudes in this study, social attitudes, are the dominant, dominant psychological traits in this bigger picture. Social uh, values with, with a picture of social axioms, with a picture of uh, 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 social norms. Social attitudes turned out, and the three of them defined a factor in common with some of the other things, but they were the defining feature. So uh, the countries, uh, and here is uh, another interesting thing for Phil to, to think. We have the, uh, 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 an advice, a, a suggestion, or, or whatever. Uh, I, I want to share this experience with you. Uh, when you run the pan cultural analysis, meaning the analysis of all these 19 scales uh, on 8,800 8, individuals, uh, uh, you get these three factors. When you pull out the part that is due to the between groups differences, the one that I primitively used in the means in the past, but you can do the two level factor analysis in the M plus, it turned out that the within groups matrix captures exactly the same thing as, as, uh, as the uh, matrix of Van uh, Karsman, where the, the uh, countries are part of it. And what that makes me think, or uh, try to say, in fact, cross-cultural differences are not all that important. We are more similar to each other psychologically 
then, then, uh, then we are different. And the business of talking about it and um, you know, going around, it is just not coming across. On the other hand, as I said before, there is a general factor among the countries coming in. This, this, okay, so I probably pressed the wrong thing. Uh, another thing that I want to give to you is the factor scores, the, the distribution of different, uh, this time I have, I have it for the countries, but it becomes too jaggedy. Uh, so I put uh, uh, for the nine, uh, nine areas uh, the mean factor scores on these different things. So the first one is social aware awareness. Let me see if I can make it. Uh, this black line here, uh, what you see is that uh, there is really not much difference. This is the mean of zero and uh, factor scores are uh, uh, standard deviation one. Uh, what you can see is that uh, on morality and social awareness, there aren't all that many differences. This is sticking out Middle East, North Africa, and that is only because uh, for some reason, uh, Morocco, uh, which was one of the uh, countries, is extremely low. We have no explanation for why it happened. If you take this out, then uh, about you know, the D various co uh, coins, D is about you know, 0.5, less than 0.5, in fact, uh, for the morality. We do not differ in terms of moral, moral uh, beliefs. Okay? Go, go to any of the countries, it will be similar, whatever anybody tells you about, uh, according to my method. Okay. Uh, <laughs> nastiness and social dominance. That is the nastiness factor here. It is this line here. Uh, higher nastiness are South Asians, Indians. I had uh, Indians, Nepalese, and Bangladeshi. Uh, when when uh, I had an Indian friend who, uh, to whom I told that uh, uh, East Asians are kind of uh, unforgiving, and he said, how did we do? We couldn't be uh, that much lower than them, and it is the case. <laughs> okay. So Indians are equally nasty uh, when you scratch them. Uh, and then you have here the Sub-Saharan Africans, and then Latin Americans are low, um, uh, Middle East, the guys that are uh, on the firing line are right in the middle. Here they are neither bad nor, nor good, we shouldn't be too bad towards them, as, they, as our government seems to be doing these days. And then you have uh, here Western Europe, Eastern Europe, Anglos, and um, East Asia. Uh, they are above the average, sometimes they are even uh, higher than that. Okay. Uh, can I go on? Okay. Uh, this is Cattell again. Uh, way back when I was young, beautiful. Uh, he wrote. Uh, 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 he talked about centrality factors, which in fact was the first use of countries as units of analysis. Uh, right at the end of the Second World War, he was doing with, for the United Nations uh, the work that uh, we have been, uh, I have been talking about. And he was the, one, the first one that taught psychologists uh, about the difference, uh, about this uh, data box. So you have variables, the tests, where the dimensions come in. You have the persons, what are the groupings of the people, and occasions of measurement. Up to that time, late 19, uh, uh, 50s, people were not even thinking about it uh, in, in this way. Now it is very, very natural. What I have been talking to you about uh, up until now is variables. Now I want to switch to the classification of the people. And the, the work that uh, um, I, I have never done in the past, uh, using the mixture mod modeling. And, uh, uh, yeah, it was a learning experience from, uh, for me and Alex Morin and uh, Tierno uh, were holding my hands and they said I didn't make any big bubbles, but I am uh, still uh, suspicious about myself uh, in that area. So uh, the big picture, Latin profile analysis using mixture modeling, uh, what we had was the national analysis. Now uh, we will be talking about uh, the uh, groups of individuals and uh, the countries. And I want to thank these two guys for uh, for helping me uh, with it. And I hope that uh, I I did not make a bubble. 
Um, so uh, there are several analyses that I carried out uh, using that uh, uh, their approach. Uh, I used individuals on the 12 variables uh, that I have listed there. The personality I took out because it was not doing much uh, in uh, my analysis. And I stuck uh, with, uh, with the 12 on social axioms, uh, social uh, um, uh, attitudes, and uh, also the, uh, what is the other one? Uh, uh, norms. Okay, um, and when I carried out the analysis, uh, five groups, uh, uh, Alex told me uh, the uh, indices were showing a sign that you have five groups there, and I said, okay, you're, uh, you're the god. Uh, but there are two groups of five groups. Uh, this is the first group of three groups. Uh, with uh, uh, some kind, uh, uh, well, with with uh, scores that are low on virtually everything, and they are uh, here the religiosity, here is the religiosity. This group uh, is low on everything. There is another group that uh, is that. So what what you do is just say, give me the groups, basically, out from this, and then the computer spits out um, uh, for each each participant for each unit of analysis, whether you belong to group one, to group two, group three, and so on. And then you can work with it. Um, so there are three groups that are clearly different on, on everything here. And there are two groups that are um, that different, that, that have different profile. Um, number five, the, the red one had a relatively small number of people, but uh, the uh, green one had uh, about as many people as group three, so it was good size group. Nevertheless, I pay less attention to these uh, two groups, but you can see that they are not, uh, you know, at, uh, at different levels. They they are not measuring it. Uh, they are not showing the same trend as as the other guys. So I'm kind of neglecting it, but uh, not quite. It may pop up again. So. Uh, when you carry out the uh, analysis on three factor scores out of the 20 variables that we had, remember social awareness, morality, nastiness, social dominance, again, the number of factors is five, but uh, again, three are strong. I will not uh, list uh, them here. And this is what, what happens. The three groups that you get on religiosity, nastiness, social dominance, and social awareness look like that. Group one is low on these first two, nastiness and social, but on morality, there is small difference, okay? Uh, it is probably significant because of the end, but uh, um, it is uh, not, not per, uh, point 0.4 of uh, the between the two groups. When uh, you do the same thing, with the uh, with, uh, uh, countries as units of analysis. Again, you get these three groups, and there's no five groups, three groups on the countries. And what you have then is, again, morality, no difference, and on nastiness and religiosity, the difference is there. Very similar to what I get with, uh, with individuals. And that was very enlightening, uh, enlightening uh, to me, because here we have countries, the means of countries showing similar things to what was happening, what is happening at the individual level. Uh, I don't know about some of the other statisticians here, but uh, I was quite excited uh, to understand that. Uh, and this is, these are the countries, Japan, South Korea, and you have Malaysia there. And the three groups are as follows. The first group are Turkey. Netherlands, Germany, Spain, Greece, Canada, Australia, UK, and Ireland. Group three in this data uh, are these guys, and group two are these, these guys here. Now, what I want to emphasize is that uh, for uh, I'm, I'm reproducing here on the right-hand side, these guys are for the three groups. There are two more groups. In, in the whole thing, five altogether. And what I have here is the percentage of people from each country that belong to that group. What I am saying is that there are people in each country that belong to these different groups, but there are some 
groups better represented in some countries with more people. So what you have here is 41% in Turkey are belonging to group 1, but there are 33% in group 2 and 105, 65 in group 3. And there are 5 and uh, 4 and 5 groups as well. So in every country you have idiots or you know, people who are not conforming to what, what uh, you expect them to be, uh, behave. But um, everything that I have in bold is more than 40%. Very arbitrary. I just pick them up, pick that up. And also, if there is no, uh, no group with more than, than uh, 40%, uh, they're all 30% or less, then I would pick up the, the one that has the uh, highest, like this, 35 versus 32. Okay? So what you have then is these uh, groups of people living in different countries. Okay? Let me go on. Then, uh, if the, the, this part here, these three columns are pretty much the same, except that uh, now I have the actual number of participants it has, instead of just percentages that I had mean, a minute ago. Uh, this is the classification of countries at the between countries level, okay? Uh, using basically uh, the means of the, of the kinds of classification. And then you have clearly these three groupings of countries. Uh, the first one corresponds very much to the group at the individual level. The second one pretty much corresponds to the second level. And uh, the third group, uh, two countries, Argentina was defining group five in the previous one, and uh, these two guys were defining group four that I kind of ignore. Uh, they have all lumped themselves together with group three. Okay? Argentina, Malaysia, and the Philippines. So the countries are here and they correspond. I was just very pleased to see that the group is on individuals correspond. And now I feel that uh, I understand what, what was happening. Uh, in some countries there are more people belonging to a particular group than belonging to other groups. Uh, I, I played around a little bit afterwards. What I did then is uh, I said, okay, these three things obviously define a conservatism, liberalism factor at the country's level. If you add these scores, these are the factor scores that I've translated into IQ. I used to work with IQ a lot. Eh? And uh, so 15 is a standard deviation mean of 100. Uh, so these are all, instead of 0 and 1 and negatives and so on, I trans uh, uh, trans uh, transfer them into IQ scale. And then I added these numbers and calculated the mean on, on the three, and here they are. And what, you, then turns, uh, what turns out to be the case, the first group, these countries, Malaysia, India, Tanzania, and so on, uh, are the highest. These guys are in the middle, and these guys are at the bottom. Okay? So, it is this, uh, I believe uh, that it is conservatism, liberalism, that underlies the major distinction between the kind of psychological conservatism liberalism. Can I go on? Okay. Almost done. Eh? Um, the big, uh, okay. Then I co uh, looked at the group one. What is the gross domestic product? Here, this is the richest group, the uh, middle group, and group three. Uh, what is the number? Uh, now, I gave them also, being an IQ um, fan, I gave them a number serious test. Uh, five items. My friend, Sasia, <coughs> without consulting with me, um, cut it down from ten to five because he doesn't understand that anybody would ask stupid questions uh, from the participants uh, in, in these kinds of studies. But it turned out to be uh, reasonably um, reliable with five items. And uh, out of five, this group got about 2.22, 2.37. Remember, these are Confucians are in, in this group and they are better than the rest of us 
you know, some of the IQ kind of tests, not too much better, but better. And then you have group three, that is the lowest. And these are the scores from the pilot study, where I had, remember that picture with the countries down, um, with uh, uh, on conservatism and the harshness, softness that I mentioned. These are the scores of these countries that are the same in two pilot, uh, the pilot and the main study. 89, conservatism, uh, 97, and this. Okay, let me go one more, and I'm almost done. Um, uh, so, there are also, there is also, in the past, cross-cultural studies often had to do with comparing Americans with the Chinese. Okay? This is called cross-cultural studies. Nowadays, you have the data from many countries, and I think that is where we should be moving um, towards. And um, there is information, there are about 20, 30 studies where more than only two countries have been used and uh, different things were looked at. One of the best, uh, best known uh, uh, classification is by Inglehart and Baker, uh, who are sociologists in fact, uh, who have uh, their own um, uh, figure and, uh, and what I have corresponds in a sense with what they have in a way. Uh, then you have Hofstede's measures on individualism, collectivism, and so on. And here are the correlation, self-expression survival values. If you're more conservative, uh, you're focusing on survival values. Uh, Hofstede's individualism, collectivism, if you are more conservative, you are more uh, collectivist in, in your nature. Uh, uh, power distance, if you're more conservative, you would expect that eh, to be present. Uh, mink of industry, how thrifty you are, and so on, also call it. And uh, what I had the, the means, and here's the correlation between conservatism from my previous study and from this study, and uh, here is the harshness, softness, uh, virtually zero correlation. Okay? You've survived. I, I'm a bit hot at this. Eh? <laughs> uh, but uh, this is the map of the world. Mm. Okay, as I know it. Eh? So what you have is European countries, England, Ireland, Germany, Holland, Spain, for some reason Greeks came in, I don't trust this data, Turks came in, <laughs> I think it has to do with uh, maybe samples in, in these two countries, but uh, uh, there they are, and here's Aussies, and here are Canadians, there are some Canadians here as well. No French, unfortunately. And then you have the middle group, eh? Brazil, US, and you have Russia, China, and uh, some Eastern European countries. Middle East, Morocco, uh, Egypt is here as well. Uh, Turkey, I thought we'll go with them, but no. And then you have China, Korea, Japan. And then the most conservative are the poorest countries. Uh, the Peru, Argentina, African countries here, in India, uh, Nepal, then you have uh, Thai uh, Thailand, then you have uh, Malaysia, Philippines, and so on. Uh, uh, that, that is pretty much all done. You know, nowadays, I'll just share a thought that I have with you. I was raised as a commie, uh, in a communist country. And uh, I thought uh, that, uh, that Marxism is a very progressive kind of, uh, of uh, theory, liberal. And then with this data on, uh, that I'm getting here, it turns out uh, that poor countries and people who have lower uh, achievement scores and IQ scores are in fact conservative. Eh? How do I, what do I do with it? Eh? The only way that I can justify it to me, to myself, uh, if you have other thoughts, let me know. You know, when I look at my father, he was born in 2005, he was in a peasant family working in the fields. And then uh, he 
was put into Hungarian school and he could speak perfect Hungarian. He learned German because we part, came from a part of Yugoslavia that was a part of Austro-Hungarian Empire. So he went through these schools, he learned it. Then he moved out uh, um, and became a mechanic on the airplanes. And I looked at the statistics. At that time, the university attendance was minuscule. When I think about him now and what he has done in his life, I think he would be BA at least with, with his IQ. So um, what has happened is a tremendous increase in the educational level. The, what is happening is people and people who are better educated according to this data tend to be less religious and less as conservative. Eh? It is kind of interesting to think about eh? uh, communism, education, uh, are, are people who don't have a eh? university degree here now not as eh? liberal as the uh, Labour Party, Conservative Party, all that. But I'll leave that eh? to you and I'm sure that you will come and argue with me. <laughs> Thank you.